So you missed the green. You've got a very easy chip shot. But the last time you had this shot, you shanked it. And now you're standing over this thing and you are petrified to hit it. And you get over it and you shank it again. Now, why do you shank it? Why do people shank little chip shots? This is, this is just a simple thing. This is, this is just a, just chip it up there and let it roll out to the target. Why do we shank? Well, there's a couple of different reasons why you shank. One reason why you shank is, and this is the hard thing to understand about a shank, not just in short game, but in full swing. Hard thing to understand about a shank is, what you're actually trying to do when you swing a golf club is miss the ball with the shaft. I know it sounds funny, but if I get a shaft here like this, a shank is in effect you taking the, cl the, the club shaft and hitting the ball. And you go, and that's going to create a shank. There's a club attached to it. And what you're really trying to do when you hit these shots is you're trying to miss the golf ball with the club or with the, with the shaft and hit it with the club. See, the club is extended away from the shaft. So when I strike it in the center of the club face, my shaft, my club shaft, is right about there. That's about a half an inch inside of that golf ball. And when I'm a half an inch inside of the golf ball, I get it in the center of the club face. So one of the reasons why you're hitting a shank is because you're hitting it with the shaft. And I think one of the easiest things that you can do is to get a shaft and just work on setting up underneath it and swinging inside of it and get your brain thinking, I'm just going inside the golf ball with the shaft, almost like there's no club head there. And now it comes out of the center of the club face. It goes pretty accurately. Don't go in. Don't go in. Oh! Okay, I really wanted it to go in. But anyway, my point is, is that all I did there was I missed the ball with the club shaft. So the reason why you're hitting the, the, the shank is because the shaft itself is too close to the golf ball. Now, let's go back to that close-up one again because I want to show you something else. If I take the club face and I open up the club face like this, so I'm going to get behind the golf ball, and I open up the club face like this, what you can see happen to that is that shaft is now touching the golf ball. All I did was take the club and spin it like that. The middle of the club face is still in the ball, in the middle of the ball, but because the club face is open, the hosel is now introduced to the golf ball. So how do I make sure that that club face doesn't open up? Well, what I want to do is I want to feel like I'm almost rotating the shaft for a right-handed golfer counterclockwise. So I take the club back and I rotate it counterclockwise. That club face is closed. And now all of a sudden it comes out of the center of the face. Now, I don't need to do that, but when I do that, I'll hit it to the left. You need to do that so that you don't hit it in the hosel and then it goes straight okay so you work on taking the club away and feeling that shaft spin for the right-handed golfer counterclockwise now the other reason why you're going to hit a shank is because you lose control of the path so if we go down the line here Many of you will take the club and let it go inside and then reroute it over and hit it in the shank. And many of you will take the club and you'll take it out here and then come back on the path that you were on and you'll hit it in the shank. Uh, so you lose control of the club. And this is where I like to use this U-bar, which is a thing that, that I've showed you through time. I like to be able to just set that on the line. And then all I want to do is feel that club stay in this channel now i'm not trying to hit it the distance that that targets away as much as i'm just trying to get a feeling of what happens when that golf club 
goes back. And what you can see, I love that down the line shot, Gibbsy. So what you can see is when I take this club back, that club head is kind of staying in that path. It's not perfect, but it stays in that path. And now all of a sudden you can see the golf ball is sort of going towards the target. And when you get comfortable with what you're doing, now you can increase the length of the swing and increase the speed of the swing. So here and then there, a little bit faster. Same thing again. So in here like this. Oh, that was so good. That was right in the center of the club face. That was excellent. And one of the things that those of you that take the club to the inside, one of the things that you're going to feel is that when you're taking the club back, it almost feels like you're taking it outside. You're not, but it feels like that. Okay. So for those of you that take it inside, feel like you're taking it outside and that will help you. The other thing that you can do is you can simply take a T and put a T in the ground. And this is what I recommend doing for individuals that are really struggling with this. Tee this up so you don't have to move. Put that T right there and now miss the T. When you start to do that, that club's not going to go inside in the backswing. You'll feel a little bit steeper. The club will start to go down. You'll strike the ball solidly, okay? So a very simple thing for you to do. Now, for those of you that are feeling like you're taking the club, uh, that you are taking it outside and you're looping underneath, you'll feel that steepness come in. And I love that feel of, of a steep angle of attack because that club is coming down. One of my favorite drills to do as well with this is to feel like you're using your trail head only and you'll tend to take that club back a little straighter. It won't go outside, it won't go inside. It tends to move back pretty straight. And you're just hitting a, a little, very slow club head speed shot. That club head speed was only moving at about 20 miles an hour. So here and there. And one of the things that you're gonna feel when you start to do this is you're gonna feel your, your trail hand have a little bit of, of bend in it like this. The wrist is bent, but the palm of your trail hand is down. So when I take this club back, I feel the wrist bend this way and the club face is down to the ground, which means my palm is down to the ground. So here, palm down, boom. And then that comes out of the center of the club face with a nice steep angle of attack. That angle of attack was coming down, I don't know, probably 12 to, to 16 uh, degrees. And now all you do is you put your lead hand on there, but you hit it with your trail hand. Same exact thing, that club goes back, you get that bend in that wrist, you push down into that so you keep that, drive that thing out, and all of a sudden, that golf ball starts tracking where you want it to go. This is interesting, I heard Lee Trevino talking about this, and he was talking about how what you wanna do is you wanna compress that club into the ground, drive that club down into the ground. So club face open, Drive it right down into the ground. This one's got a, this one has a good look. Did I hit this one hard enough? I think I did. Oh man, how does that happen to a guy like me? So anyway, so that's what you can do. And then the final thing for those of you that are shanking with path is simply this. You take a tee and you can get close up on that one, Gibbsy. And you put that tee just on the top side of that golf ball. And all you're gonna do, not, don't focus on hitting the ball. Focus on missing the tee with the club. So in here, and now you miss it. Now you'll hit it out on the toe, but you'll get this sensation that that club is moving underneath that, that tee. What is happening? Well, I feel when I, when I do that drill, what I feel like is my hands are in close to my body when I come through. So now what I'll do is I'll remove the tee, bring this ball in here, practice swing, feel like my hands come into my body and probably, yeah, that club will now move slightly inside the golf ball when I go. So I get set up like this and now hands inside to the body. That one there creates a little bit of a pull, understandably, because the path is gonna be going that way. Club face is fairly square. So those are the ways that you can help yourself get rid of the shanks and get comfortable with this short shot. It takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of courage because what you want to do when you go out on the course is you want to hit you want to hit a putter you don't want to chip this you want to putt it because you can't shank the putter that's no way to get better you got to run to your weakness and your weakness is you hit these shanks and you got to solve the problem 
And so do these little drills. Get yourself a T-bar. Maybe you're going to get some T's when you go out there. Put them in your pocket. Put them on the ground. Do that one-handed drill. All these little different things to help you improve. And then don't forget, if you get, just ask your pro or somebody for an extra uh, shaft. Somebody's got a shaft for you. And then all you're going to do, in fact, you know what you can do too, is you can turn your club upside down if you want to and just bring a ball in here. The weight is quite a bit different, obviously. And then all you're going to do is just take that handle and make it miss that way. But get used to missing the golf ball with the club shaft. When you start to miss the ball with the club shaft, you're going to start to miss the club shaft when you strike. I mean, you'll miss that ball with the club shaft. You'll get rid of that shank, okay? And so you get in there like this, and now you're looking at that target. Boom, boom. Good, clean strike. Roll out to that. And you know what? It gets up there about six, seven feet, and you think to yourself, that's a great shot because they didn't shank. Get rid of that shank. Focus on this stuff. I'm telling you, it's gone. It'd be gone. To improve all parts of your game, subscribe to my channel and click the link below.